Hey everybody, let's talk Portuguese. Today's video is going to be all about Portuguese-based creoles. Before we get into today's video, I do have a special announcement for the channel. If you didn't already know, I have set up a Discord for the channel. Discord is a platform where you can chat with people who share common interests with you on dedicated servers. So I've set up a server where we can talk in Portuguese or English about things related to Portuguese, linguistics, and other cultural topics that are related to them. So whether you're looking to improve your skills in Portuguese or English, or you'd simply like to talk more in depth about the topics of my videos or other things related to them, you can feel more than welcome to come do so on the Discord. Because the Discord is open to the public and in order to prevent spam, all I'm asking is that when you join the Discord, you introduce yourself and click on a react to an automated message when you get in there. From there, you'll have access to the chats. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, come chat with us on the Discord. Also, if you're enjoying the videos that I'm making on my channel and you'd like to support me more directly, you can do so on Patreon. Patreon is a place where you can buy me a coffee each month and in return, you get access to exclusive extras. Included in those extras is a dedicated channel on the Discord where you can chat with me and other patrons. And other extras include things like knowing about what I'm working on next first, sources and other materials from the research that I do for my videos, and even fun things like postcards from me to you. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, head on over to patreon.com slash sashinka where you can find out all of the info. Now, on with the video. So today's video is going to be all about Portuguese based creoles. Now before we get into talking specifically about Portuguese based creoles, we have to define what exactly a creole itself is. Is. Creole languages are the result of a convergence of many different linguistic communities and the need among them to have a common language. They come about as the result of mixing these languages together and simplifying them in important ways. Usually one language will serve as the basis of these languages, often called a superstrate language, with secondary contributing languages sometimes referred to as substrate languages. The main language serving as the base of creoles is usually the source of most of the vocabulary in a creole, and it can even be the source of the main grammar aspects of a creole. However, secondary languages that influence creoles can also be the source of grammatical aspects of those creole languages. A common feature of creole languages is the morphosyntactic simplification or the reduction of all of the grammatical moving parts in the languages, as well as the regularization of grammatical forms. Where most languages have lots of irregular forms, especially in things like verbs, creoles tend to minimize those. Creole languages are intergenerational. What that means is that they are spoken within a community and they are passed on from one generation to another. So with that very basic definition of a creole out of the way, let's take a look at Portuguese-based creoles. As you may have guessed by the name Portuguese-based creoles, creoles can have a basis in pretty much any language. Creoles are a natural linguistic phenomenon, but have a relatively short history of documentation. There are creoles in the world that have quite a lot of major languages as their basis, including English, French, Dutch, Arabic, and others. So when we get to Portuguese-based creoles, we're talking about the first documented creole languages. And the first Portuguese-based creoles came about in the late 1400s as Portuguese settlement activity in the Western African region of Upper Guinea intensified. Guinea is a region in Western Africa, which has given its name to many countries. And the region of Upper Guinea includes the countries that we now know as Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, the Gambia, and the southern part of Senegal. This region was especially important to Portuguese merchants not only as a part of the slave trade, but also as a resting point on the way to India. The oldest Portuguese-based creole still spoken is the Creole of Cape Verde. Cape Verdean Creole has its origins in the Portuguese settlement of Cape Verde. Before the Portuguese arrived to the archipelago of Cape Verde, there were no inhabitants there. So in waves starting in the late 1400s, going through the late 1500s, the late 1600s, and so on, Portuguese settlement and the enslaved populations that went along with it would result in the creole spoken there. The term creole itself comes from the Latin verb creare, which would come to be criar in modern Portuguese. And
And originally the term Creole referred to people. The Creoles were the descendants of European settlers. Whether that be settlers in their own exclusive community or settlers who had intermixed with local or enslaved populations, their children and their descendants were called Creoles or Creolush. Later on, this same term would go on to be applied to this intermixed language that they ended up speaking. Especially in the case of West African Creoles, these languages are the result of the mixture of European settlers and enslaved populations. In more recent centuries, this also would come to include local African populations who were not enslaved. However, the origin of West African Creoles is intimately linked to the historical slave trade. And Portuguese based Creoles are documented around the world. In the former Dutch colonies of Aruba and Curaçao in the Caribbean, a Portuguese-based Creole called Papiamento is spoken. Papiamento has undergone significant influence from Venezuelan Spanish due to geographical proximity, as well as English and Dutch, so it is significantly more of a hybrid between those languages than a purely Portuguese-based Creole at this point in time. The name Papiamento comes from the verb papiar in Portuguese, which means basically to converse. This is a verb that is common in many Portuguese-based Creoles that have that verb as the basis for the word to speak. The situation of Creoles in other corners of the globe is not as vibrant. The Creoles of South Asia, including India and Sri Lanka, are largely extinct. There is only one significant community of Creole speakers in India in the city of Daman. And even in the case of the Creole of Daman, it is a highly restricted language. It is the language of a very small local Catholic community that on the most recent numbers has about 10 to 12,000 speakers. Neighboring Portuguese-based Creoles either only have very few native speakers left and are effectively moribund, or they are extinct altogether. This is a similar situation to the Portuguese-based Creoles of Southeast Asia. The Portuguese-based Creoles of Southeast Asia were historically focused in the region of Malaysia and Indonesia. Nowadays, the only Portuguese-based Creoles left in the region are Kristang, spoken in the Malacca region of Malaysia, as well as Singapore, and Macanese Patois, spoken in Macau. Kristang is spoken by a tiny Christian community in those places. There have been revitalization efforts for Kristang among the Kristang community in order to preserve their cultural heritage. This has resulted in the creation of a day for the Kristang language in Singapore in 2017, as well as the publication of literature documenting the Kristang language. This is similar to the case of Macanese Patois. Macanese Patois is restricted to a very small portion of the local Macau population. Even under Portuguese rule, Macanese Patois was relegated to a very informal position in Macau society. It was seen by the Portuguese as a deformed or primitive form of Portuguese and was not encouraged in favor of standard European Portuguese itself. Nowadays, the remaining speakers of Macanese Patois are mostly elderly people. However, that has not stopped revitalization efforts from taking place in Macau. A local theater group has been set up in Patois and some forms of entertainment can be seen online in Patois. There has also been Portuguese funding dedicated to the preservation and documentation of Patois from places like ah. Institut Kalosh Gulbenkian. The Gulbenkian ah. Institute is of course famous for the art museum in Lisbon, something that I highly recommend that you stop by and see if you find yourself in Lisbon. But now let's shift our focus to where Creoles are very much healthy and actively spoken. I am of course talking about Western Africa. We can start with São Tomé in Príncipe, the island nation where Portuguese is most widely spoken among the general population in Africa. Although nearly the entire the entirety of the population of São Tomé in Príncipe speaks standard Portuguese, there is a widespread Creole that is spoken specifically on the island of São Tomé. That Creole is called Foro or Foro. In local uses, it is treated as the local dialect of Portuguese, although it is more accurately described as a Creole language. The Foro Creole also forms part of a dialectal continuum with the Creole spoken on the Anubon island of Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea is a tiny country in Western Africa. It was a Portuguese territory until it was passed off to the Spanish. As a result, the principal language of Equatorial Guinea for official functions is in fact Spanish, and Spanish therefore has had an influence on Anubon Creole. But Anubon Creole and Foru are so similar that they can be considered to be part of a dialectal continuum. They share most of their vocabulary and their grammars are strikingly similar. Despite this, the linguistic situation 
situation of Saint Tome, Príncipe cannot be truly said to be diglossic since standard Portuguese is the main language of the islands. And that leads us to Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau. Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau have the largest and most active communities of Creole speakers. Creole in both countries is the national language even if it is not the official language. Standard Portuguese is the official language in both country, but Creole is the language that the general population speaks amongst itself. The Creole of Cape Verde, as I mentioned earlier, is the oldest Portuguese-based Creole that we have documented. Aside from the earliest waves of settlement of Cape Verde, the remaining islands that were left to be populated of the archipelago were done by natives of the islands themselves starting in the 1700s. There has been a significant Portuguese presence in what is now Guinea-Bissau as well as in the region of Casamansa in the south of Senegal for a very long time as well. So the Portuguese-based Creole spoken in Guinea-Bissau also extends to this region of southern Senegal. Because of this historic connection to Portugal in this region, Senegal applied to be a part of the Lusophonia. And indeed, the region of Casamansa is the source of much of the migration from Senegal to Portugal in the modern day. The Creole of Cape Verde can be said to have two main dialects, with other dialects influenced by them. These are the Barlavento dialect of São Vicente and the city of Mindelo, as well as the Sotavento dialect of Santiago and the capital of Cape Verde, Praia. There is widespread cultural output in Cape Verde in Creole. You have probably heard of the Cape Verdean music Morna, especially from the highly successful international singer Cesaria Evora. She sung mostly in Cape Verdean styles and mostly in Cape Verdean Creole. As I mentioned previously, Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau have a diglossic situation. These countries are textbook cases of diglossia. The official language is standard Portuguese in both cases, but the general population by and large speaks Creole. In the case of Cape Verde, this has led to a situation of there being a spectrum of decreolization. Decreolization is the convergence of a Creole language with its base language. That basically means that the Creole language takes on more and more features of the base language. In the case of Cape Verdean Creole, you can see this both in the form of Portuguese-influenced vocabulary, as well as Portuguese-influenced syntax. And this is largely due to the fact that Portuguese is the language of government, education, education, and the media. Parliamentary sessions, the fundamental years of schooling, as well as the nightly and print news are all in Portuguese. This is also the case in Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau also has some level of decreolization or influence from Portuguese, as well as influence from other African languages from other bordering African nations. One of the main reasons that Creole is not an official language of Cape Verde or Guinea-Bissau is because the Creoles of these countries are not standardized. This this means that they have not been systematized in either their written, grammatical, or even lexical form. That being said, in both countries, there is constitutional recognition of the local Creoles. And so the world of the Portuguese-based Creoles is very vast and in fact, very poorly documented. There is still quite a lot of research to be done on the Portuguese-based Creoles, and there's a lot of work to be done on the systematization of the vibrant Portuguese-based Creoles of West Africa. With that being said, I dare say that's quite a lot of information for one video. If you're interested in the Portuguese-based Creoles and you'd like me to follow up with other videos about them, leave me a comment down below. That's all I've got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you learned something or otherwise found it interesting, leave me a thumbs up down below. You might think about subscribing to my channel if you're not already. I make lots of videos about the Portuguese language, which you can find in playlists directly on my channel or in the eye above, and I will see you next time.